Hare Krishna everyone. In this video, I would like to present a Bhagavad Gita perspective on a very controversial topic, the overturning of Roe v. Wade judgment by the US Supreme Court, in other words, the removal of abortion as a constitutional right for the US women. A worried woman went to her doctor and said, Doctor, I have a serious problem and I desperately need your help. I have a baby who is just one year old and I'm already expecting the next one. I don't want kids so close together. So the doctor said, okay, and what do you want me to do? She said, I want you to perform an abortion and I'm really counting on your help with this. The doctor thought for a while and after some silence, he told her, well, I think I have a better solution for your problem. It's less dangerous for you too. The lady smiles thinking that the doctor has accepted her request. Then he continued, you see, in order for you not to take care of two babies at the same time, let's kill the child in your arms. This way you could rest some before the next one is born. If we are going to kill one of them, it doesn't matter which one it is. There would be no risk for your body if you choose the one in your arms. The lady was horrified and said, no doctor, how terrible is that? It's a crime to kill a child. I agree, the doctor said, but it's you who seem to be okay with that and I thought this is the best solution. Now it was the lady's turn to, became, to become silent and thoughtful while the doctor smiled, realizing that he has made his point. He convinced the mom that there is no difference in killing a child that is already born and the one that's still in the womb. A crime is a crime, no matter what you call it, even if you choose to call it abortion. Now you may be wondering, why did I share this story? On June 24, 2022, the US Supreme Court overturned the Roe v. Wade judgment. For those of us not familiar with what Roe v. Wade is, a quick flashback to the late 1960s when an American lady by the name Norma McCurvey, uh, he already had two children, she had donated one of them, and when she was pregnant for the third time, she opted for an abortion. Given that the abortion laws are very strict in Texas, she approached two lawyers, Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey, to fight the case on her behalf. All through this trial of the case, uh, this lady Norma McCorvey was given a pseudonym to protect her privacy. Uh, her name was Jane Roe. The name given to her was Jane Roe. So in the Roe versus Wade, Roe is the name of Jane Roe. And Wade, Henry Wade, he was the Dallas District Attorney who fought the case from the state side. And this trial went on for quite some time. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court. And in 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court passed an historic judgment recognizing abortion as a constitutional right for the women of U.S. A lesser known fact that is that the same lady, Jane Roe, in 2003, she filed an affidavit saying that back then she did not know much about all these things. She did not know any better. And uh, she also, it is also said that the, she, she took part in a few anti-abortion rallies. Well, interestingly, uh, after almost about five decades, recently on June 24, 2022, the U.S. Supreme Court reversed this decision and they have removed abortion as a fundamental right for the women of U.S., and since then, the entire country of U.S. has been divided into two ends of the spectrum. It's totally in turmoil. On one end of the spectrum, we have all the pro-life people celebrating and welcoming the decision after a long wait of almost five decades. But on the other end of the spectrum are the pro-choice people, many, many women taking to the streets and uh, bombarding the social media with slogans and, you know, fighting for protesting and fighting for women's rights, saying that this is an invasion into their reproductive rights. So my dear friends, this is where I would like to shed some light, uh, uh, sharing some shlokas from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, let us try to understand this concept in a broader perspective from a scriptural point of view. Can we really look at this debate around abortion just as a woman's rights issue? Not really. I think it needs to be looked at as a human's rights issue. What about the right of the helpless child who doesn't have a voice to defend itself, who is in the womb of the mother? If they did have
Bravo Voice, I'm sure the 73 million babies who are being killed in the name of abortion every single year as per the statistics posted by World Health Organization in an article on 25th November 2021, they would also take to the streets and protest and ask for the right to their lives. Now, why is it that so many women are opting for abortion and they don't really want these children? In fact, this concept of unwanted progeny was raised by the great warrior Arjuna at the beginning of Kurukshetra war. He's telling Krishna in chapter 1, sloka number 40, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Adharma Bhivavat Krishna Pradushyanti Kulastriyaha Stri Shudushta Suvashneya Jayate Varna Sankaraha What a systematic analysis by Arjuna. He's saying when there is Adharma, in, when there is a rise in Adharma, in religion, in the society, the very first impact of that is on the women. And when the women are misled and exploited, the consequence of that is Varana Sankara, unwanted progeny. And later he goes on to describe that when the society is filled with these unwanted children, then all the kind of chaos that gets created, it's a very degraded condition. Sadly, what Arjuna foresaw then has become a reality today. Now we may say, well, what about the women who, uh, uh, you know, want to abort because they are subjected to sexual assault? And what about the women whose life is under risk? Well, these are exceptional cases and it is a very minuscule percentage of that 73 million compared to women aborting uh, for various other reasons, whether it is seeing the child as an impediment for their career development or whether it is financial difficulty in raising the child or the social stigma associated with uh, uh, bearing the child outside of wedlock. No matter what reasons there are, but none of them will justify the killing of the, uh, the killing and taking away the life of a child, a helpless child. And the 73 million is such a huge number. To put it in context, the number of deaths estimated in Second World War was 56 million. Now compare that to 73 million babies being aborted every single year. It is such a sad state of affairs. Now somebody may contend and say, but there, well, uh, it's just a lump of matter in the womb. There is no life. But said who? The Vedas, the ancient texts of knowledge claim that there is life right at the time of conception from the very beginning. Matter cannot just grow on its own. Life comes from life. And in fact, even the Roman Catholics share the same belief. So it's a crime to abort the baby. So we have to look at this in a broader perspective and forget about the state law, federal law, all that is there in its place. But there are also universal laws in place, the laws of karma that is also governing when we do the right thing versus the wrong thing. And in the scriptures, it is stated that anybody who participates, who commits abortion, will be forced in their future lives also to enter into the wombs of mothers where they will also not see the daylight. They will also be killed in the wombs of other mothers. As many times as they abort, those many births they have to take and be killed in some other mother's womb. As you sow, so shall you reap. Now also the next thing that we need to look at is not just the rights but also the responsibilities. They go hand in hand. So let's switch gears and now talk about what are the responsibilities. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, shloka 11, Krishna is telling Arjuna, Bhalam balavatam chaham kama ragave varjitam dharma viruddhu bhuteshu kamosmi bharatar shabha. O best of the Bharatas, Arjuna, I am that kama, that lust which is not contrary to the principles of religion. So lust also has its utility for creating progeny. What kind of progeny? High caliber progeny, high caliber children as a contribution to the society for the well-being of the society. So when talking about responsibility, both the man and the woman have a huge responsibility to protect the sanctity of the institution of marriage and procreate within the institution of marriage. And it's a sacred act. 
not just to create children, but also to procreate high caliber children. This is uh, actually a massive problem today uh, for a country like US. A statistic says that 51% of the children who are being born are born out of wedlock. It's such a problem. And also the educational institutions have a huge responsibility as well. Instead of merely importing sex education and how to use contraceptive pills, rather the educational institution should be more focused on teaching celibacy, teaching the art of sense control, mind control, and also uh, elevating the consciousness of our students in a way that they understand what is the deeper meaning of life, what is the higher purpose of life. So when kids are trained like this, they are more equipped to become more responsible adults. And also as a society, we have a huge responsibility, not subscribing to the culture of, you know, the celebrities and uh, TV serials and movies and models and advertisements, aggrandizing uh, uh, the concept of lust and uh, promoting living in relationships and the culture of boyfriend, girlfriend. So we also should be very responsible in what kind of content we put it out there and also by protecting our children from being exposed to such uh, degraded content. So talking about responsibility, so all of us both at the individual level and at the collective level, we should do our part and uh, contribute to the betterment of the society. So imagine a world where it's not a culture of sense it's not a culture of sense gratification but of sense control imagine a world where it's not about self indulgence but about self evolution it's not about seeing children as a liability but as an asset and a culture a society where motherhood and parenthood is not seen as a burden but it is seen as a wonderful privilege what a beautiful world that would be so let us all reflect and ponder upon these things and uh, let us all strive towards making it a better society and let's strive to protect the life of the children in the womb. Uh, let's become the voice of the voiceless. So thank you very much for watching more such videos. Please do subscribe to Aradhana online YouTube channel. I request you to share this video with everybody that you know and I will see you in the next video. Until then take care. Hare Krishna.